Please stand. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. All very welcome now to Mass for Sunday. Special welcome to all who are listening on the airwaves at home. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Just to remind you, the bulletin was given to you in the way in. The readings are in the bulletin and then you take it home with you. That's a good deal, isn't it? It's all in there. Also, to remind your family members, our friends, we also have the downstairs. If people would like to go down, they can. We can fit about 40 or 50 people with spiritual distancing downstairs. You will hear the Mass, you will see it, and you'll get communion. So you basically, in this church, we have two churches, one upstairs and one downstairs. Anybody who is afraid that you may know of, who is at home or wherever, let them know that in St. Andrews, we have the downstairs as well. Amen? Amen. Let's remind ourselves today that we are celebrating the Trinity. I can't explain it, but I'll talk about it. How about that in a few moments? But now let's ask the Lord again to remove all the worries and the distractions from our minds. I confess to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to his people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification made known to the human race your wondrous mystery, grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith we may acknowledge the Trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God 
forever and ever. Please be seated now for the readings. A reading from the book of Exodus. Early in the morning, Moses went up Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him, taking along the two stone tablets. Having come down in a cloud, the Lord stood with Moses there and proclaimed his name, Lord. Thus the Lord passed before him and cried out, The Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and rich in kindness and fidelity. Moses at once bowed down to the ground in worship. Then he said, If I find favor with you, O Lord, do come along in our company. This is indeed a stiff-necked people, yet pardon our wickedness and sins, and receive us as your own. The word of the Lord. Glory and praise forever. God of our fathers, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. And blessed is your holy and glorious name, praiseworthy and exalted above all for all ages. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the temple of your holy glory. Praiseworthy and glorious above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you on the throne of your kingdom. Praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you who look into the depths from your throne upon the cherubim. Praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice, mend your ways, encourage one another, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Grant one another, greet one another with a holy kiss. All the holy ones greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, to God who is, who was, and who is to
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Good afternoon again. It's nice to see people back in the church. As I said last week, for two and a half months where I'm standing here, I was looking into a camera as we were saying the Holy Mass. But to also those who are at home are very welcome as well. I want to speak about three things. I want to speak about today's feast, this weekend, the Trinity. I want to speak about the unrest in America at the moment, as you've seen on your TVs. And I also want to speak about the coronavirus in the context of what the Pope did and what he said, those three things. First of all, As I said at the beginning, the Trinity is a dogma. It's also a great mystery. We're not talking about three gods. We're talking about one God in three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Every time we begin prayer, how do we begin? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. For those who don't believe in God, begin by saying, to whom it may concern. Now, St. Augustine, there's that famous story about he was going along the beach, thinking about the Trinity, trying to understand it. And he saw a little boy who dug a hole in the sand, and he was running out to the sea, bringing in water and putting it into the hole. And Augustine asked him, what are you doing? And the boy said, I'm going to put the whole sea into my hole here in the sand. And Augustine said, that's impossible. And the boy looked at Augustine, he says, it's also impossible for your tiny mind to contemplate the Trinity. And then he disappeared. But I think the words that Augustine also said are very accurate. If you could figure out God, he would not be God. It's very humbling. We say one God, three divine persons, equal. We go in faith. We will never understand the mystery in this life, will we? What is a mystery? Something that cannot be solved, right? Now, Let me just move on for a moment. You've watched your TVs, especially over the last week or thereabout, maybe two weeks. We hear a lot today about social media. We hear a lot today about caught on a camera. But the church has always spoken up and said, all lives matter. All life matters. As I was watching this over the last week or so, the demonstrations, the, the unrest, I always remember a few years ago, I was in Ireland, and you have to look this up. There's a place called Loch Derg. It's a place in Donegal, in Ireland, where you go on a boat, and there's a little island. And you spend three days, two nights, without any food, and uh, it's a real pilgrimage. So I was there a few years ago. 
I always remember this, and this man, I would say he was now in his 50s. A nice, humble man. Obviously, he had got faith. He was there making the novena, making the pilgrimage. And he said to me, Father, can I talk to you? I said, yeah, sure. And he told me, you see, when I see the unrest on the media, it brings me back to Ireland when I was growing up in the 70s. 1968, Ireland rebelled, Northern Ireland. In a way, it was over religion, it was over politics. And it went on for 30 years. 1968. Anyway, this man was involved in the Irish Republican Army as a child, 17, 20 years of age. And he had tremendous remorse of what he had done and other teenagers like him. They had used guns, bombs, and killed people. And he says, Father, what was it all for? I was so young, he says, I didn't even know what we were fighting for. But you see, what happens is, when people see violence, especially the young, they imitate what goes on. And all I can say is that if somehow you can influence those young people to hold back, because it's not now, but it's in years later, they're going to, to regret it. All life matters, as the Catholic Church has been saying for centuries. All life matters. There's no question about that. The last point I want to speak about today is the coronavirus. Did you know that we now call it the COVID-19? I was trying to figure out how did it change names from cor coronavirus to COVID-19? Well, COVID is short for coronavirus, and they put a D onto it for disease, and then they put 19 on because they reckon it began last year. So that's why it's called COVID-19. Now, I think, if I'm right in saying this, Normally, a flu, you have about 1% get affected per year. With this, they're saying 3.4, right? Now, March the 27th, who could forget it? Probably saw it on your TVs. Italy at that time was raging with the virus. The Vatican was closed down in Italy and everything around. And the Pope said, we are going to bless the world. We're going to bless the whole world. And in the square in the Vatican on March the 27th, the Friday, it was around one o'clock here as we watched it right here in the church. The Pope went to the podium and they read the gospel from Matthew, the storm. The apostles are in the boat and they're saying to the Lord, do you care that we're drowning? And he answers by saying, Oh, where is your faith? Where is your faith? And it's the only passage in the gospel where Jesus is asleep when they needed him most. And when they woke him up, do you care that we are drowning? And his response was, where is your faith? The Pope read that, and he spoke about letting Jesus into the boat of our life, letting him in. And you know, over the last few weeks, because of the isolation, you had time to ponder what was important in your lives. After that, he went in to the basilica. And in the monstrance, the blessed sacrament. And he came out to the door. And as you would look at it, you would say, it looks so small, the monstrance with Jesus in the Eucharist, to be blessing the world. And yet, as I watched that at that time, on March the 27th, as he blessed the whole world and asked God for mercy on us all, I was saying to myself, wow, it looks so tiny. 
Yet isn't that how he came to us in humility as a tiny baby in Bethlehem? But that same Lord Jesus that he blessed the world with, in a few moments you're going to receive the same Eucharist. Isn't that a great blessing? But I bring this up because next weekend is the Feast of Corpus Christi. And since I was ordained, which will be 22 years on uh, Saturday coming, I've always done a procession with the Blessed Sacrament, wherever I was. But this year, we can't do a procession. After the Mass is on Sunday, it'll only take five minutes. We're going to have the benediction, and we're going to bless you with the Eucharist. There is no other. It is the God who made us, who told us, I will not leave you alone. That blessing on Sunday is everything. So there are three things that I wanted to speak about. The Trinity, about the virus, the Eucharist, and about the unrest. As we continue the Mass now, most of you have been away from the Eucharist for too long, over two months. As you receive the Eucharist, as you receive Jesus, just sit there quietly for a few moments. Ask him again, heal me and strengthen me at this time that we live in. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us humbly now profess our faith in one God, I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God and true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the power of the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. On this Saturday afternoon now, we humbly raise our hearts, our minds to our Heavenly Father as we bring the needs before him, asking him to hear them and answer them according to our need. For the Church, drawn from all nations and languages, may our triune God guide us and sustain us as we proclaim the good news of the kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in civil power and authority, may the Holy Spirit enkindle in them hearts. For servant leadership, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those enduring trials and challenges in life, may they be uplifted by the loving presence of God and the support and compassion of the community of faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here in worship of the triune God, may the communion of love he outpours preserve us in faith and increase us in holiness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they take their place at the eternal feast in the kingdom of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Mass intentions are for Narcisco G. Betancourt, Antonio Resendez, Joaquin Jack Camara, and the Camara family. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We continue to pray now for the unrest in America at the moment, that people will protest in a patient way without violence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our we continue to pray now for this virus that it will pass over 
and that people will not be affected by it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, We continue to pray for all those who are sick and those who look after the sick, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, And wherever you are now at the moment, we just pause for a moment, asking the Lord in in the silence of your own hearts. Heavenly Father, you know the needs of all who are present and who are watching. We bring all the prayers before you through the intercession of the Blessed Mother, St. Joseph, St. Anthony, St. Paul, St. Andrew, as we say the Hail Mary together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Sanctify by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord, our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord not in the unity of a single person, but in the trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and the Holy Spirit, so that in confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance and their equality in majesty, For this is praised by the angels, the archangels, the seraphim, and the sheriffim, who never cease to cry out each day, as with one voice they acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood 
of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Edgar, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope 
and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. is Jesus, the risen Lord, the healer. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Amen. At this time, you can make a spiritual communion. I love you, O oh my God. I cannot receive you in holy communion. Come, nevertheless, and visit me with your grace. Come spiritually into my heart, purify it, sanctify it, render it like unto your own. Amen. We will have two stations for Holy Communion. I'll be up here in front, and Michael will be at the break.
Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession, was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O virgins of virgins, our mother. To you do we come, before you we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O mother of the word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in your mercy, hear and answer them. Amen. O Mary, conceive without sin. May the heart of Jesus in the most blessed sacrament be praised, adored, and loved with grateful affection at every moment in all the tabernacles of the world, even to the end of time. Amen. Saint Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl around the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Let us pray. May receiving this sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal Holy Trinity and undivided unity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a few quick announcements, just to remind you that the TV Mass will continue. TCAM are going to take it. Uh, channel 15 and Verizon channel 22. They're going to continue to take the Mass Tuesdays, Thursday at 1 p.m., Sundays at 3.30 p.m. So we want to thank the local channel, TCAM, for allowing the Holy Mass from St. Andrews up on the airwaves. And uh, let those who uh, do not have computers, let them know that you can watch it on Sundays at 3.30 p.m., the Holy Mass. Again, to remind you that, not so much you, but those at home, that we do have a downstairs with the screen up. You can hear the Mass and also receive the Eucharist. The Mass is again in this church. Sundays are the normal time, 8 o'clock and 10.30. During the week, Monday to Friday, 8 a.m., and Saturday the vigil is at 4 p.m. Annunciation of the Lord, our other parish, will have the vigil mass at 4 p.m. on Saturday and Sunday, 8.30 a.m. for now, until this virus is over. So continue to do the best you can. And again, we want to thank all who were able to send in donations and the budget envelopes to keep the churches going. The goal is that we can keep our churches open, but it's your church. It's you support it. This is how it stays open. So keep that in mind. And again, is it good to be back? Yes. Yes. It's good to be back, yes. So continue again to pray for this virus will pass over our area and that we can get back to whatever normal was as best we can. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has ended now. Go in peace and love to serve the Lord. God bless you all.